you are all fine and uh, today we are going to start with the next uh, unit of the biology and the unit fifth is the ecology and the environment and the chapter that I am going to start today is the organisms and the environment my dear students as you can see the nature and its amazing creations are being displayed on the screen and I must tell you that ecology is the science which deals with the environment and its interaction with the various living organisms. Now today since we are starting with the first chapter of the unit fifth that is ecology and the environment, the chapter organisms and the environment, it includes various topics and that topic that I am going to discuss today with you are the habitat, micro habitat and the ecological niche. These terms seems to be very simple to be understood but let us understand these terms in the biological perspective. Now first of all let me explain to you what is meant by the term habitat. Habitat is the specific physical space occupied by an organism or a population or the community and hence it will be called as the habitat of the organism, habitat of the population or the habitat of the community and it has a particular combination of abiotic and the environmental factors. So habitat is the living space of an organism, population or the community. Now in order to understand it in a still better way, let us discuss various characteristics of the habitat. Now what are the various characteristics that must be there so that it signifies the habitat of a particular organism. First, it is the sum total of environmental factors which determine the existence of an individual, population or the community in a particular locality. Secondly, habitat has no limits or boundations. It could be as small as the burrow, bark of a tree or the intestine of an ant, sometimes some organisms which live as the parasites, they live inside the intestines or some other organ. It could be as large as the pond or lake or ocean or the complete forest or a desert or a grassland. It, it, is, it could be any long, it could be as small as a drop of water. So there is no limit or bounding that it is of this much size. So this is the characteristic feature of the habitat. Now I must mention here that animals generally show habitat specificity. That is they exist at a particular place and they will always be found in that very particular place. But since biology is the science of exceptions, so I would uh, cite here the exception of a uh, Indian shad Hilsa Hilsa which can live in both fresh water as well as sea water that is an exception. Now it is generally occupied by the entire community for example pond with the various individuals at that time it corresponds to the cohabitation. Now I am explaining to you the word cohabitation which means the cohabitation which means existence of more than one species in the same habitat. What is it? It is generally occupied by the entire community if a particular place, so for example a pond or some other place or a desert or a forest is occupied by the same community, entire community then they exist these individual different species they are occupying the same habitat and this term is called as the cohabitation or the cohabitat. So these are the various characteristics of the habitat but sometimes very unique habitats are occupied by the organisms. Let us discuss these one by one but overall there are the 
habitats which could be classified into aquatic habitat and the terrestrial habitat among the aquatic habitat the aquatic habitat can either be fresh water or the salt water salt water or the saline water now among the water the organism could occupy a space in the warm water or the cold water or it could be a still water or the running water still water for example ponds lakes etc and the running water for example rivers and the streams etc and then the other than aquatic is the terrestrial habitat which means on land and still the classification terrestrial areas could be dry or the wet hot or the cold or sloping or the level lands they could be grasslands they could be deserts they could be uh, wetlands etc or and several other classifications are possible now whether the habitat is aquatic or terrestrial or some other inside an organism some unique habitats shown by various organisms uh, are there and these are the, the on the screen you can see the picture i am showing of the terrestrial habitats and then the aquatic habitats now whatsoever is the type of the habitat this is so uh, let us discuss about the variety of habitats and the example that i am first taking is the tubiflex tubiflex is an annelid which is found in running and well aerated fresh water bodies with abundant organic matter that is it is variety of the habitats they occupy that within the aquatic habitat they show further specificity that it is found in running and well aerated fresh water but it must contain abundant organic matter which it needs for its survival next i am taking the example of chironomus larva now chironomus larva is a larva of the dipterian insect and it is found in water which is devoid of oxygen that is oxygen must not be present there it uh, survives in non oxygen oxygen areas and so this is its specificity that it is uh, present in the areas again specificity where oxygen must be absent similarly plasmodium is a malarial parasite which is found in the orbices and liver cells of the man and in the stomach and salivary glands of the female anopheles mosquito now let us take the example of rabbit erectolagus which is found in grasslands as well as in the open woodlands that is it shows a, a little broadening of its habitats that it is found in grasslands as well as in the open woodlands then scoliodon is a fish which is also known as the indian shark and is found in the sea all along the indian coast that is showing the specificity in its habitat now after we have discussed the various different types of the habitats now amphibians another example i am giving amphibians are generally amphibious but may be aquatic for example nectarous are terrestrial for example buffo but no amphibian is marine that is they have thin and respiratory skin and hence they are uh, not marine now the next topic that i am taking into consideration is the micro habitat as i just discussed with you that within a habitat the organism shows further specificity and that gives rise to another term which is called as the micro habitat often within the small habitats there are the micro habitats which are smaller areas with different characteristics for example a tree has different habitat the branches the bark the root areas another example is the seaside which has a sandy shore lines with lie with waves and also shows shallow areas with rocks being bettered by the waves this subdivision 
of the habitat having different environmental conditions and different kinds of the organisms is called as the micro habitat for example forest floor tree canopy muddy bottom surface of the pond burrow center and pond they show different habitation different type of the organisms and within the pond or within the same forest we have the small habitats which are called as the micro habitat i hope you have understood the term habitat and the micro habitat so now i shall proceed on to the next very important definition that is the niche what is ecological niche now this term niche it was given by elton in the year 1927 who defines the ecological niche as an ecological uh, as a animals place in the biotic environment and its relation to the food and animals or its functional role in the ecosystem however uh, i would be in a better position if i uh, explain to you that uh in order to understand the niche in a better way it would be better to call that if habitat is the address of the organism then ecological niche is the profession of the organism it is not wrong to say that niche is the way of life each species occupies a niche in the community a niche is the role of the species uh, that role that species plays in the ecosystem and includes the types of food it eats where it lives where it reproduces and its relationships with the other organisms now the niche it is it occupies various aspects and these various aspects of the niche are the habitat niche tropical trophic niche and the hyper volume reach what are these the spatial spatial or the habitat niche it denotes the actual physical place occupied by the organism that is where exactly the organism is existing we call it the habitat niche the next next is the tropical niche which denotes the functional position of an organism in the ecosystem that is whether an organism is a producer a consumer or a decomposer trophic level of the uh, particular organism that is second aspect of the ecological niche and the third one is the hyper volume or the multi dimensional niche what it is it refers to the position of the organism in the environmental gradient for example up to what temperature up to which degree of moisture it can tolerate and it lives in the ecosystem that defines its hyper volume uh, need uh, of the organism and when all the three habitat niche tropical niche and the hyper volume niche they are understood it completes the ecological niche now my dear students i will explain this term in a more better way by taking the example of these two bugs as you can see on the screen this is the notonecta and corixa species this one is the notonecta and this is the corixa species and i will try to explain how does the niche differs from the term habitat now notonecta species which is called as the back swimmer and the corixa species which is called as the water boatman are the two aquatic bugs found in the same habitat that is pond choked with small vegetarian but have different feeding habits for example notonecta grasps and eats upon the animals like insects tadpoles snails and small fish while corixa it feeds on the decaying vegetation in this way these two closely related species do live in the same habitat use different energy sources and hence occupies two different niches another example i will quote here of a bird that is 
Plosius melanocephalus. This is Plosius melanocephalus, and this one is Plosius collaris. Now here again the habitat and niche makes the difference. These two occupy the same nest, so have the same habitat, but occupy different ecological niche because one feeds on the insects while the other eats upon the seeds, so having different tropical niches. That is, one Plosius melanocephalus it eats it eats the insects etc. and the uh, Plosius collaris it eats the seeds etc. So they occupy different niches. Now next if you have understood this here I would like to tell you before telling the significance of the ecological niche we should we have come to the conclusion that no two species occupy the same ecological niche if they do occur in the same geographical area then they use different food items or are active at different times or are occupying somewhat different niches in case the two different species found in the same ecological niche they are only one survived while the other is declined so a lot of significance of a particular organism in terms of the ecological niche the first one is that it avoids the intense competition ecological niche helps in avoiding the intense competition among the species for the place of living that is one cannot survive at the expense of the other and second it also helps in diversification of species into subspecies because within the same habitat with the same uh, physical features sometimes the two species are divided into two subspecies on the basis of the different ecological niche so this is very important definition of the uh, in the ecological terms and so we have must understand the term ecological niche i hope my students you have completely understood the term ecological niche so that's all for today thank you very much stay safe till we meet next time with the next topic that is the various levels of biological organism thank you